praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Dear friends in Jesus, greetings and prayers from Tabor Divine Retreat Ashram, Kalyan, Mumbai. Today we think about the power of the forgiving love of Jesus. And we all need the forgiveness of sins. When we read Psalm 32 verses 1 to 5, the psalmist is speaking about the happiness of a person who could receive the forgiveness of God. And at the same time, the psalmist is speaking about the situation of a person who was not able to receive the forgiveness of God. Bible is speaking in this way. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imbues no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away, through my groaning all day long, for day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Bible is speaking about the happiness of a person who could receive the forgiveness of God. When we go through the Bible, we can understand that only God can forgive the sins of the human beings. We can buy anything by giving money or by influencing with beauty or power, anything in this world, but no one can buy or no one can receive the forgiveness of sins by giving something, by giving money or influencing with power or beauty. Only we can receive this forgiveness of sins only from God. Only God can forgive the sins of human beings. When we go through the Bible, Bible is speaking in this way, the price of life is too costly and we are not able to give the price of life. Because the price of life is too costly. If you read Psalm 49 verses 7 and 8. Psalm 49 verses 7 and 8. Bible is speaking about the price of life. Bible is speaking in this way. Truly no ransom avails for one's life. There is no price one can give to God for it. For the ransom of life is costly and can never suffice. Bible is beautifully explaining, uh, no ransom avails for one's life. There is no price one can give to God for it. For the ransom of life is costly and can never suffice. Yes, that is the fact. That is the reality. We are not able to give uh, the price of life. We are not able to give the ransom uh, for our sins. So, only Jesus, Jesus could become the ransom for many. According to the law of God, every sinner has punishment. According to the law of God, every sinner has the punishment. And Jesus became a substitute for us. And he became ransom for us. And he saved us from the slavery of sin. He became substitute for us and he became ransom for us. So, dear friends in Jesus, we can receive this forgiveness by receiving Jesus in our life in the name of the precious blood of Jesus and receiving Jesus, we can receive this forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. If you go through Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, there, Bible is speaking about uh, the forgiveness of sins. 
only god can forgive the sins of the human being here in the chapter 2 gospel of mark chapter 2 verses 1 to uh, 12 there we see a few people uh, bring a, a paralytic person they brought a paralytic person near jesus and jesus forgave his sins first but hearing these verses they were thinking they were murmuring about jesus who is this man to forgive the sins of this man who is this man but perceiving their uh, thoughts jesus was telling them uh, why do you think in this way son of god son of god has also the authority to forgive the sins of human beings and he was clarifying that truth by healing that paralytic person this is a beautiful passage and there uh, it is uh, it is very clear only god can forgive the sins of the human being uh, i shall read that passage when uh, he returned to kafarnam after some days it was reported that he was at home so many gathered around that there was no longer room for them not even in front of the door and he was speaking the word to them then some people came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them and when they could not bring him to jesus because of the crowd they removed the roof above him and after having dug through it they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay When Jesus saw their faith he said to the paralytic son your sins are forgiven now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts why does this fellow speak in this way it is blasphemy who can forgive sins but god alone at once jesus perceived in his spirit that they Uh, they were discussing these questions among themselves and he said to them why do you raise such questions in your hearts which is easier which is easier to say to the paralytic you are sins are forgiven or to say stand up and take your mat and walk but so you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins he said to the paralytic i said to you stand up take your mat and go to your home and he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorified god saying we have never seen anything like this dear friends in jesus when we go through this bible passage it is very clear in this bible passage only god can forgive the sins of the human beings that's why scribes were questioning jesus uh, they know very well the law of god so they were thinking together how can this man forgive the sins of the human beings or this paralytic person but being the son of god jesus has the authority to forgive the sins of the human beings in order to make it clear for them what jesus did in order to make it clear for them jesus healed that paralytic person jesus healed that paralytic person and jesus cleared that son of god has also the authority to forgive the sins of the human beings praise the lord hallelujah dear friends jesus only jesus only father god only god can forgive the sins of the uh, human beings so uh, whenever Uh, we think about the forgiveness of sins we can receive this forgiveness only from god only from the son of god this is what we read in many bible passages if you read book of isaiah chapter 43 verse 25 bible is speaking in this way i i am he who blots out your transgressions bible is speaking in this way again book of isaiah chapter 44 verse 22 i have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist return to me 
for I have redeemed you. These are Bible verses are speaking about the authority of God to forgive the sins of the human beings. And when we come to the New Testament, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21, their Bible is speaking in this way, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus will save his people from their sins. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. Again, in John, chapter 1, verse 29, Bible is speaking in this way, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Dear friends in Jesus, when we go through these Bible passages, these all Bible passages are speaking about the authority of God to forgive the sins of the human beings. Only God can forgive the sins of human beings. You and I cannot forgive the sins of any persons in this world. Only God can forgive the sins of the human beings. When we think about the sacrament of reconciliation or sacrament of confession, the most important Bible verse regarding, most important Bible reference regarding the sacrament of reconciliations may be, uh, not maybe, the most important Bible reference is John chapter 20 verse 23. But for better understanding, it is good to read chapter 20 verses 19 onwards. Bible is speaking in this way. This is after the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus was giving his authority to forgive the sins of the human beings uh, to his selected disciples. Let us go through that Bible passage. Gospel of John chapter 20 verses 19 onwards. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, he breathed on them, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Here we see Jesus was sharing his authority to his selected disciples. Jesus has the authority to forgive the sins of the human beings after saving the humankind from the slavery of sin through his death uh, at Calvary. Jesus, after his resurrection, he was sharing his power his authority to forgive the sins of the human beings to his selected disciples. So, uh, Peter was there and uh, we consider Peter as the first pope of the church and the next popes, cardinals, bishops and priests are continuing the ministry of this forgiveness, the ministry of reconciliation in the church today. So, this confession and this ministry of forgiveness is a plan of God and Jesus wishes we should go through this plan of God in order to receive uh, the forgiveness of sins. Uh, the same power Jesus was giving to the same uh, Saint Peter, there is one more reference in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 19. There we see Jesus was giving this power to St. Peter. Actually, Jesus was giving that power to the church by speaking in this way. Chapter, Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 16, verses 18 and 19, and Jesus is speaking in this way. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads will not prevail against it. 
I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the power. This is the authority Jesus had given to the church. Jesus had given to Peter. We should read this Bible passage once more. I shall read for you. We have to uh, make it clear in our mind. And I tell you, chapter 16, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18 and 19. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of heads. Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Dear friends in Jesus, this is the power. This is the authority given to the church by with the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ. So that is what we are continuing through the ministry of the church, through the ministry of the reconciliation in the church. So this is the plan of God. We can receive the forgiveness of God through this sacrament of confession. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And dear friends in Jesus, when we think about this sacrament of uh, reconciliation, uh, we could we can see many of the instances uh, many of the incidents are there whenever people receive the sacrament of reconciliation the proper disposition of repentance after this uh, uh, receiving this forgiveness of god many of the people receive healings also because in the book of Joshua chapter 3 verse 5, we read in this way, book of Joshua chapter 3 verses 5, we read in this way, sanctify yourself, you will see wonders among you in your life tomorrow. Wonders among you tomorrow. So in order to see wonders, healings and blessings in your life, what Bible is suggesting to us, sanctify yourself. So if you are ready to sanctify yourself, your life Purify your life, you will see wonders, healings and blessings in your life. That is the promise of Jesus. Sometimes uh, there, is, um, there is, because of the sinful ways, a few people are sick. Bible is giving, uh, saying in that way. That, uh, but through the sacrament of reconciliation, uh, many people are receiving healing also because we see Psalm 107 was 17. Psalm 107 was 17 is speaking in this way. Some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their iniquities endured affliction. This is very important matter. Bible is speaking in this way. Some were sick through their sinful ways. And because of their iniquities, endured affliction. So, Bible says, not all persons, not all sick persons, some were sick through their sinful ways. Oh, if you are sick through your sinful ways, when you take, when you receive the sacrament of confession or the sacrament of reconciliation, at the same moment, you will be able to receive the healing power of God. And if you go through the Gospel of John, chapter 5, there we see Jesus is healing a paralytic person. Uh, he was sick for many years. After healing that person, uh, after healing that person, uh, later Jesus found him in the temple and Jesus was warning him in this way. Chapter 5, Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 14, we read in this way. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, any more so that nothing worse happens to you. That is the warning of Jesus. Dear friends, Jesus, there is a connection. We can see there is a connection between uh, this healing and our sinful life. So, whenever 
one person, a person is ready to receive the forgiveness of God, that person can receive the healing of God also. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us close our eyes for a minute. Dear friends in Jesus, we were thinking about the forgiveness of sins. Only God can forgive the sins of the human beings. Only God can forgive the sins of the human beings. And it is the plan of God. We have to receive this forgiveness through the sacrament of confession. So that is plan of God. If you are ready to receive uh, the sacrament of confession in proper disposition, you will receive not only forgiveness, you will receive healings and other blessings and deliverances in your life. So let us ask and let us pray for this gift today. Asking this gift, let's pray together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. May God bless you. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.